And now I present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Oh, I will. Thank you. I will. Oh, gosh. Gorsh, gorsh, gorsh. Well, hello there. Greetings. How the hell are you? Um, I want to uh, mention ahead of time, <laughs> I please excuse the racket that you will periodically hear in the background of our show. Um, the people next door are uh, building yet, a cabin. Yet again, uh, building a um, a porch of some porch. kind. Porch. It's a, a cabin. A cabin, an extension of their home. So you will hear s saws and a lot of yakking in the background, un like that, unwanted yakking. Hey, hey. You know, uh, uh, um. Not not the world, the universal yakking that we do here on progressive discussions, you know. I want to, I want to salute uh, Senator Bernie Sanders for picketing with the uh, Verizon workers. Uh, good man, good man. And... Um, also, uh, the New York uh, Transit Union, I believe, supports Bernie Sanders, and uh, but unfortunately, mm -hmm. I will have to bash the uh, the uh, Democrats that I thought were progressive, but they're not. They suddenly turned blue dog and decided to support. Hillary Clinton instead of Bernie, and I'm talking about this scumbag fellow Italian American piece of shit mayor mayor of New York City, Bill De Blasio, and his stupid wife. Ooh. Uh, uh, she made a statement that Hillary has the best plan for the country. Yeah, I, right. Uh, uh, I didn't hear any plan. Hey, I heard. It's like I a, heard. It's like uh, 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 Bernie can't get his stuff done. Oh, the oh, the numbers. Oh, okay. The numbers don't add uh, up. Numbers don't add up. No. Well, guess what? Uh, um, for real, the nation's top economists uh, did a study of Bernie Sanders' plan, and the numbers do add up, and then some. Yes, the numbers add up, and. Uh, nobody talks about how. Uh, why can't we get back all the money we lost in all those tax cuts for the last 30, 35 years? Right. What about the Panama Papers with the uh, offshore tax havens and all that? And uh, yeah. how do you get them all back? Yeah. Like. Uh, I mean, is isn't that fair? Trying to get that money back yeah. that they. Don't forget, every time you get a tax cut for the rich, somebody else has to pick up the tab. Well, uh, Hillary's excuse is uh, she will reveal her transcripts on everything when everyone else reveals theirs, which is just, she's just uh, um, blowing off the questions. Uh -huh. She's cherry picking the questions she wants to answer. And uh, she just blowing, blow, she's just blowing up the subject off. Well, and she must have a beautiful voice to be paid two hundred sixty thousand dollars for a speech. Well, like Bernie Sanders you says, know? that that 
that that must be a real fantastic speech mm -hmm. to get that much money. And she called out Wall Street. Hey, hey, you boys, now you stop with that mortgage stuff. You know, you're hurting the you're, you're, you're hurting the poor people. I'm sure she said all of that. Oh man! Uh, um, if you don't stop, I won't take your money anymore. Ugh. Well, <laughs> um, if you are poor, low income, or a minority, <clears throat> what Hillary Clinton represents proves that she brings nothing to the table for nothing those for, for those people. Right. For, for those people. Now, if it's the top twenty percent, huh? That's a different story. They're they're blue dogs. They're they're they're. Uh, I wouldn't even call them moderate Democrats. They're uh, or Democrats. They're uh, they're uh, they're right wingers in disguise of Democrats. A wolf in sheep's clothing. You know. But yeah, uh, I mentioned I mentioned it in the in the new the newsletter, the new article in the newsletter goes into what happened in the 90s with Bill Clinton and all the money that started pouring in from the corporations. Okay? I go into it out a little bit. That's good, because the new newsletter is out. It's out! I also want to salute, big time, Mr. Joe Scarborough of MSNBC for really hammering pretty hard uh, the Democratic uh, representatives on that show, the, the videos on YouTube, where he talks about the system, the campaign system being rigged. And, uh, so does Mr. Trump. What he used as an example was uh, when uh, Bernie Sanders uh, won Wyoming by a substantial margin, Hillary got more delegates. Figure that one out, folks. Figure out that math. That's what Trump is you complaining about, too. I mean, I mean uh, he's winning all these things here, and 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 and, and the cruise man is getting delegates. The uh, the uh, lunatic uh, evangelical cultist is getting the delegates. So the same thing is happening to Donald. Yes, absolutely. Uh, the, the, the two parties uh, have it rigged. You know that. The two party system. Jeez. I mean, and then, I mean, the very fact, the very fact that any human, any American has to have a voter ID is un unconstitutional. I mean, I mean, the fact that they're American and they can prove it should allow them to vote. And, um, you know, and anything that obstructs a person from voting mm -hmm. can also be called uh, unconstitutional. Uh, voted votes not counted for same thing mm -hmm. um, voting bo uh, voting uh, polling centers being closed down early with people still waiting online computer voting computer computer voting where you cast your vote for one person and it switches to <laughs> to, to the right wing opponent yeah uh, another he wins 51 to 49 um you know and uh it, 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 it's just it's criminal it's just uh, 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 unethical underhanded sneaky sleazy you you know use whatever words you want negative negative words but mm -hmm. it, it's it's rigged it's rigged and and what those two what those two uh um um chills were saying to Joe Scarborough was you think Hillary rigged it? You think Hillary actually went in there and, 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 and rigs things, you know, uh, personally rigs things? She doesn't have to personally do any of that. Yeah, it's the parties that have rigged everything. She has cronies. She has cronies doing that. Cowardly cronies. Yeah, I... I, I, I well, as in... Who don't want to change the system. As in crony capitalism. Uh, um, Who like the system just as it is. Well, then this is because the system allows them to steal... It's great. ...taxpayers' money. And do what they want. And do what they want with it. Hold the power. And, and give welfare to the rich with your tax dollars. Mm -hmm. 
But if a poor person asks for help, they have a fit about it. It's like, it's, it's, it's like even so-called... Lazy bastard mooches. Even so-called Christians do not want to help the poor. No, no, now, no. Now, no. You, you figure that out. A right, uh, uh, an evangelical person who always uses the word Christian yeah. refuses and thumps the Bible to and thumps the Bible refuses yeah. to help the poor. Correct. Which is actually anti-Bible, anti-God of the Bible. Uh, correct, 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 correct. So, they're cultists. They're cults. They're cults. I mean, um, they're Iron Rands. Iron right. Rands. Yes, objectivists. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, this is where we're at. I mean, I thought, listen, the debate recently in Brooklyn, New York, I'm very happy. <laughs> and, and I expected the people of Brooklyn to be behind Bernie Sanders and cheering loudly. But, my God, they were cheering for every little thing that was said. And it was difficult to hear some of... Uh, Bernie Sanders' uh, uh, words. I can care less about Hillary's words, but um, but I'm glad they got behind him. You know, it's Brooklyn, <laughs> New York. Uh, it was a rowdy, rambunctious crowd. Uh, typically obnoxious New York, but you mm. know what? They got behind Bernie, which is a great thing. Uh, but um, you better get behind him on primary day. But when asked the question about you know Wall Street, Goldman Sachs. Uh, you know, uh, Hillary's campaign contributions, her speeches, blah, 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 blah. Uh, you know, when they uh, cornered Bernie with a question related to that, he could have lowered the boom against Hillary and really exposed her dirt, but he didn't. He, he, he used a very general answer. You yeah, know, but, he's, he, but he doesn't. He still situation has been exposed quite, you know, a lot and everything. But the people don't care. Now, I mean, is Bernie still has a little bit of that ultra liberal, pa yeah, but hipster, he hipster pacifism in him? He doesn't. He's not going for Hillary's jugular vein. I'm like I would, like I'm yours truly saying, would. Yeah. It doesn't matter because the people are still supporting the system we have. So even if Bernie... So you can expose it all day and night and... and even if know. Bernie took out a long list like the Dead Sea Scrolls and named everything that Hillary and Billary has done wrong, you feel the people that are supporting... I think he could have come out tomorrow with a list of things that she has done for her contributors, and it still wouldn't matter. The same amount of people who have decided to support. Hey, I'm not surprised that Charlie Rangel, he's a blue, he's a corporatist, is supporting yes, Hillary. Exactly. Uh, the guy who's not even relevant, the infamous Anthony Weiner. <coughs> it's great to be with him. Mr. Wiener. Hot Dog. Mr. Hot Dog, Mr. Uh, nude uh, photos on social media. Yeah, he's supporting Hillary. I'm really shocked about Bill de Blasio. Yeah. That totally floored me. I'm like, what? what? I thought Bill de Blasio was very progressive. But I guess somebody waved... Yeah, I believe they were calling him a socialist too, no? Oh, and I bet it bothered him. Uh, you know, you got, this is one, another reason why you have to really respect Bernie Sanders. He, doesn't, he hasn't flip-flopped in his career. No. It passed uh, 30 years or whatever he's been around. Um, you all right? Yeah. You're looking at something. Yeah, I mean... The door was moving. Oh. oh. Poltergeist? No. Or is the it po wind. Poltergeist? The wind. Uh, excuse me. I mean, Bernie Sanders, you got to respect his integrity and his honesty and the fact that he doesn't change his mind. He stood by what he believes in. Yeah. But then you take some some uh, spineless, pusillanimous, pipsqueak Democrat that uh, does flip-flop and change their mind about issues. In this case, they're out there. The Democratic Party's corrupt. Forget it. Forget about the Democrats of the past. FDR, Truman. Forget about it. JFK. Um, 
Oh, let me tell you the story now. Oh, we're going to have a story? Is this a fairy tale? No, it's not a fairy. I oh. wish it was a fairy tale. I get a call. I get a call from supposedly um, this um, child, Luki. Should I should I go out there swinging my shillelagh now or later? No, I get a. They got dangerous tools out there. I. Yeah, they might have a chainsaw. No, they got the you know the the thing that puts the a nail driver. Oh, chunk of oh, chunk. Oh chunk, chunk. yeah. All right. Pull it I, right through your heart, baby. I get a call. Call. A call Luke. from a uh, so-called child leukemia fundraiser. Uh -huh. You know how I feel about charities nowadays, being that they expose all, all of them, the big charities. Uh, uh -huh. Last time I spoke about the March of Dimes, where the CEO gets $880,000 a year mm. and pays disabled people a whopping $2 an hour. And actually, uh, uh, my friend Bobby work for them until he got so pissed off he quit ah. he's all he's disabled so anyway I get this call and I'm listening to her and she's she's reading from a script mm -hmm. ba -ba 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 -ba. all right she's not coming up for air I have to, uh, instead of waste her time and my time I stopped her I says look I know about all the big charities I know about how the CEOs they have CEOs of these big charities that are receiving astronomical salaries, and this is this is a charity, mind you, the f a fundraiser. Right? Mm -hmm. You don't really need a CEO making that kind of money. Okay, I, I feel, feel it's, it's supposed to have um, a predominantly mostly volunteer work, but they're not so. They have administrators getting paid, and and I told the woman, the young lady that I know that a very small percentage of the dollar goes towards the worthy cause. Mm -hmm. Very small percentage. Her answer was, you can tell there was a supervisor in the background, uh -uh. I, I can hear it telling her things. Uh, she's, her answer was, well, we feel it's better that these people, unfortunate people, are getting a few, you know, some a little bit of change than no, than nothing at all. Right. Which sounded like a very Republican answer to yes. me. They should be thankful they're getting a handful, a little handful, not even a handful. Uh, 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 it's like two, 20, three, or four percent at the most. Twenty. Let's say it. let's say it's uh, fifteen cents, twenty-five cents yeah. on a dollar. They're, they're lucky to getting that yeah, because if it wasn't her answer was if it wasn't for us oh yeah they'll be getting nothing now how do I if know it wasn't for them they'd be getting 99 percent how do I know that the term us is really us how do I know they represent the childhood leukemia well they found if they're only giving them you know that three four percent they don't the charity is supposed to be getting the 99 percent. Yeah, well what I told them was, you know what charity I have a lot of respect for? Only one, St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Okay. I wonder all, how much they give. All of them across the board, the kids are not, the cancer uh, patients are not charged. Yeah, but still in all, how much do they give? That's, you know. Yeah. Now, but the point out. the point is they all have CEOs making a squillion mm -hmm. dollars a year they all have all these administrative costs and they all give a tiny percentage of the fundraiser right. to the unfortunate people right. and I and, and, and I just you Blow know her off man after Stop I heard blowing up my phone uh, yeah after I after I heard that very Republican right-wing answer she gave me I just hung up because mm. I felt there was no more debate after she gave me that There's answer. No debate. No. You can't debate it. She, 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 she would probably repeat the same thing. Well, they're lucky they're getting a few cents. Well, they're lucky they're getting a few cents. Okay, now.
in the business world, unfortunately, in the business world, <clears throat> there are what I call opportunistic parasites. <gasps> Uh, it happens often, it happens with corporations, with big business, it happens with individuals. Where, let's say, a corporation, you approach a corporation um, trying to present, sell your invention or your idea. The corporation tells you, we feel very positive about your idea and your invention and we'll get back to you. And they never do. And then they turn around and you they steal your idea or invention and they make money on it they capitalize on it well, you or go. you got to go to George Foreman yeah now it is, it, uh, you know you know his daughter business stuff he had the George Foreman grill sitting in his house for a long time and his daughter convinced him to 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 do the commercials he was he didn't want to do it at first uh -huh. that was the story isn't that amazing hmm. anyway getting back to uh, individuals um, it, it's like a sort of um, um, non-legal plagiarism. Non-legal plagiarism. It's not patented, okay? Your, your invention and your idea is not patented. But somebody takes it, they turn around, and like I know people in the fitness industry who have uh, picked the brains like vultures mm. of the masters, of the people that are the gurus of, of uh, alternative fitness pick their brains like vultures uh, uh, accumulated the valuable information that they learned from these masters uh, at the top of their field they turn around and then they take all that knowledge and they established themselves in the, in the business they start making money quite often ripping off customers, ripping off customers uh, with high fees for their seminars and their products. Mm -hmm. This and, is standard business practice. And here's the part that upsets me. They never mention and give credit to the people that originally taught them mm -hmm. what they know. They just simply take your, your knowledge, they take what you know, what you do, Make believe it's theirs. Make believe it's theirs. Hey, mm -hmm. Joe Weider would would never have been the master blaster if it wasn't for Bob Hoffman <laughs> of the York Barbell Company. Okay, he never um, he denied any affiliation with Bob Hoffman after he became the rich and famous master blaster. The same thing with all these people in alternative fitness. Uh, recently, a man uh, in charge of an organization, a, a company now, called Indian Clubs Portugal, he, Mr. Helder Gandra, he sounded like a very humble and sincere Ooh. person. And um, myself, James P. Madonna, and Mr. Zé Ricardo, also a Portuguese gentleman living in Ireland, we both helped him tremendously. Mm -hmm. He took our gifts, I'm not going to go into detail, uh, on how to manufacture uh, authentic traditional Indian club and mostly Persian clubs, Persian meals. He took all of our help. He established his own business. He's making money. He's, ch he, he's charging a lot. He, he, will, he will not even make Mr. Zay Ricardo or myself a free, a free pair of Persian clubs or at least give it, uh, sell it to us at a big discount. Mm. He won't do nothing. Never mentioned our name. Actually, he denied that Zay Ricardo and James P. Madonna ever helped them at all. Mm -hmm. He denied that. And, and I have the email to prove that he did receive such help. Mm -hmm. Now he lies about that. He's, uh, this happens often when people are scraping the bottom of the barrel. They're very humble. They're, 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 they make the greatest 
friends, loyal friends, until they build themselves up, become successful, then they forget all about you. Sycophants, fawners. Well, they're, they're, they're maybe a self, Standard. maybe a self sycophant. Um, you know, you know, there are other users. The user. The users. Usury. Now, uh, then you know they, they don't even give credit. They don't give kudos. They don't uh, name drop the people who help them along the way up, and they also lie. He, he, he. He used to use uh, high quality beech wood to make his clubs. All right, this is just an example. I'm not saying this happens in business, unfortunately, across the board. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's called uh, th you know uh, industrial espionage. Right. This is uh -huh. just an example. He used beechwood. Then all of a sudden, he's promoting Portuguese pine because I mean, granted, Portuguese pine has a gorgeous wood grain. Mm -hmm. I was like totally floored. It was it's stunning. And, but he made it out to be this very special rare wood excuse to jack up the price but the reality is and I saw the price list from Portugal the reality is Portuguese pine is the cheapest <laughs> lowest quality wood in Portugal hmm. so he's taking something he's using Portuguese pine so he can increase his profits but he's lying to the consumer making it out to be a special rare wood. Mm. Okay. This goes back to what I'm getting at is this is common in free market capitalism. The, the, the misrepresentation, the lying, the deception, companies that lie to their consumers. It happens across the board. All the time. It happens all the time. All right. All the time. Not all the time, man. That's it. That's all I have to say. I don't want to digress. I don't want to... Uh, Belabor the point. Yeah. Um, we know it's wrong. We know it's corrupt. We know it's rigged. We know it's all this stuff. And the, the thing we don't know is why it continues. People are not held accountable, especially under a, under a right-wing capitalist country. If the right-wingers are in charge, there's no regulations. Uh -huh. No one's held no accountable for, for, for business uh, dishonesty. Uh -huh. with, uh, with business, no one's held accountable. But if the little guy is dishonest, they want to throw away the key. No, they want to put you in a privatized prison. Goldman Sachs just got fined five billion dollars. Anybody going to jail? Huh? For their for their uh, uh, mortgage predatoring and etc. Hey, selling about? products to their people who they knew were crap. Shoddy, shoddy. Uh, etc. Uh, uh, what about? Um, but five billion dollars. Hey, what about all the? What about the, the corporations that built these privatized prisons down south? They're suing the southern states. For not having enough inmates <laughs> in the pri privatized prison. Hey, I thought slavery was illegal. Uh, it's constitutional. Well, I'm sure the I'm sure Republicans who used to be the Dixiecrats are not too th are not too fond. Well, the Dixiecrats were the Democrats. Yeah, but I'm sure they were they they were never fond of Abraham Lincoln. Well, yes, they were. He was their first president. The hell are you talking about? No, 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 no. The people of the South oh, were not fond of Lincoln free, oh, no. free the slaves. See, would you don't listen to me when I got uh, finished my statement. Of course the, they were. He freed the slaves. These are these Dixie Krats. The are Dixie Krats were Democrats. Are re yes. They were not Republicans. Republicans were Republicans. Right. Republicans were once a decent party. But they jumped with ship Lincoln. They jumped ship after the civil rights movement became there was law. A Explain to me what happened. All right. Explain the to me what Rats, happened. I know what happened, but you know. the Dix over time, after Lincoln and the Civil War and etc., the Republicans too changed. But the Dixiecrats, the Democrats of that time, 
also changed. They became more, to use the word, nicer. And more for the little guy. Of course, that guy went down the tubes also. You know what? But don't get yourself involved with parties because they're both bad. They both have a lousy history. Republicans maybe for the first eight years or so, you know, were okay. With Lincoln. Yeah. Well, I, no, it, it, it reinforces what we were saying before about the privatized prisons happened to be in the South. They like the concept of slavery. Because they can get away with more down there than they can up here. Right. And they uh, and they're, I think the Southern two-party system politicians are easy to pay off. No shit. Because they don't have... There's, they're poor states. Like, let's take Mississippi. They can get away with being discriminate, discriminatory against gay mm -hmm. people and transgender people. Mm -hmm. Get away with that. Because they got the people behind them. Uh -huh. Evangelicals and whatever. This noise is, is, is becoming yeah. unbearable. You, it, you know? What do you want to do? You want to just try to grin and bear it or shut the window? or? Uh, you can't shut the window. What do you, yeah, the window's I know. shut yeah. already. Yeah, this is really, really... Um, it sucks. There's always something. People, well, there's always something trying to fuck the show over. Anyway, let us sink our teeth into these readings. When it comes to this area, there's always something trying to fuck us over. If it isn't a person, it's a group of people. But anyway, uh, everything we talk about politically is part of our series, Capitalism and the Conch Shell. There's the conch. Soak in that conch energy. Don't get conky. Don't get conch junior. All right, go ahead. An Englewood, New Jersey art dealer is facing thousands of dollars in fines and possible jail time for defying a city inspector's order to take down a painting that displayed a woman's ass. Oh, big deal. The Renaissance paintings are loaded with fat asses. Big deal. Laura Borghi, who owns Borghi Fine Arts Gallery, Inc., sued the city in federal court in Newark this week, claiming Englewood is violating her civil rights. The suit seeks to strike down a municipal ordinance that prohibits the display of nudity in it's a, public. It's a painting, right? Yes, it's, it's not a even a photograph. The gallery, <laughs> which has been on East Palisade Avenue since 2007, specializes in American and European painting. It's absurd. And periodically exhibits artworks of nude, or particularly partially, excuse me, nude figures. On January 7th, Borghi was cited by Walter Decktouch, a city code official, Deck who is also named as a defendant in the suit. I think Decktouch is touched in the head. For allegedly violating the ordinance by displaying a nude painting. Oh, oh, oh. oh heaven forbid. Uh, the gluteus maximus should be seen in Eng Englewood, New Jersey. Dep Dutch issued the citation after Borghi refused to remove Pinup, a painting by the artist Tom Dash of a partially dressed woman that showed her bare ass. I thought um, bare asses were pretty much old hat uh, by this time. You know, uh, uh, the bear, maybe in, in the in the uh, before early sixties, fifties. Before you can ban something, it has to go to the Supreme Court because we have a law 
uh, we have obscenity laws. Right. That's and it a, has to be proven right. that it is obscene. A town, a borough, cannot just take this upon themselves. That is correct. That is correct. So yeah. they will lose the suit. But the woman has to go through all of this ball bullshit to get her justice. Yeah. And it's going to cost her. Just for a painted right. bare buttocks. There was no allegation that the painting was obscene. Can't do it though without a you know a trial. The painting remained on display for about a month after the violation was issued until she changed the show. Borghi said she later exhibited another nude painting in the window, but the city did not cite her again. Huh. She declined further comment on the advice of her attorney. She declined to share an image of the painting, which she has removed from the gallery's website, saying that she was not able to reach her lawyer to get his permission to do so. Uh, with all the with all the important issues that need to be tackled in New Jersey and in America, they waste valuable court time and money and money over something ridiculous over someone's ass over a painting a bare ass a painting of a bare ass yeah a fictitious woman <laughs> supposedly that was that is showing buttocks hey what about all the renaissance paintings that show buttocks yeah well you know that that, that those those are uh, those are high art. The masterpiece. Yes. They yeah. are the masterpiece. They have a different view of that stuff. You see. Yeah, because it's hundreds of years old. And, and that too. You know, yeah. uh, a, a famous painter who croaked, you have to die for your paintings to be worth something. Oh, yeah. So you never, you never reap, the, re sure. you never reap the rewards of, unless you're a, you're an, a celebrity. You're a famous person, and you're you could be the worst artist, you know. Like uh, when I saw Sylvester Stallone's paintings, they were pathetic. They were they were like a child did them. Well, you know, Jack Papin doesn't do too well either. Jacques Papin made an attempt to paint. He made he paints he paints he paints. He's got him in his uh, yeah his new uh, yeah. Uh, cookbook. I do like Tony Bennett's paintings. Tony Bennett's are pretty okay. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, uh, Tony Curtis, he painted too. I don't know, is he dead? I don't know. Uh, well, yeah, he painted. I don't I, keep up with him. I mean, I don't care if somebody outside of the art world takes a liking to painting as a hobby and wants to do it, whether you're famous or not. And if somebody is stupid enough to pay uh, $50,000 or whatever for a piece of crap, just because a, 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 a movie star painted it? Hey, mm -hmm. That's your choice, that's your money. There isn't a day, or in some cases an hour, that goes by that we are not hit with a barrage of anti-Trump media coverage and protests. They have difficulty understanding how it is that Trump has managed to build the support he enjoys in his campaign. A lot of certainly, anger, yeah. certainly, contrary to one popular point of view, it has little to do with intellect and everything to do with a point of view on the issues that in another election era might have difficulty gaining traction. Well, these are very angry Americans that are scapegoating and blaming their problems on the wrong people. The fodder for Trump's campaign is that we have allowed those who have been accorded the responsibility of looking after our interests to instead spend their time in Washington looking after their own interests. 
with nearly every vote or point of view on the issues based on gaining political capital. That's the source of your problems, uh, uh, Americans. Washington. Don't blame Mexicans or people of color or but gays. It, but it isn't Washington per se. It's the people running it. Well, that's what I meant. I didn't me well, literally Washington. mean the buildings of Washington, no, no, no. D.C. The city. The government. The, the government. That's how you, when you said that, it's the government. It's not the government's fault. It's the people running it. The government is fine, set up fine, but we got bad people in there. Even the progressive tax system that that libertarians and Republicans uh, want to get rid of the IRS. Ooh. Even that is set up fairly. Yeah, the progressive if it tax was used fairly, but it ain't. It's not because every time you get a Republican in there, he has tax cuts for the rich. Mm -hmm. And then who has to make it up? Middle class. Thank you. Middle class, yeah. By virtue, oh excuse me, our government is dysfunctional and has been for two decades or more. See, he's wrong. It's the people, not the government. Yeah, because because people, libertarians and 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 Republicans are always blaming big government. That's the government thing. is too big. Government is the problem. No, government is not the problem. When you say that, you buy into the Reagan it philosophy. Is, I think it's the corporate CEOs that send the lobbyists to pay off, to talk to and convince and pay off the career politicians to change the law in their favor. Mm -hmm. It's not... Go actually... Bribery! Yeah. Okay. Yeah, bribery. bribery. I mean, without government uh, uh, agencies and government employees, a lot of a lot of the things we take for granted today in the United States, we won't have anymore. A lot of the things that we need, the services, mm -hmm. you know, but they don't look at that. Oh, they look at it all right, because they want smaller government, and yeah. you know where smaller they want it. Certainly not in the military. No. Certainly not in subsidies to corporations hey, and the me, rich. Let me tell you something. Tax cuts. Those rich, those rich Republicans, they don't drive over the crumbling bridges of America. They will. They will most likely never ever collapse. You know, into into the river. But the little guy will collapse. Will fall into the river as the bridges come down. And the infrastructure is is in shambles. American bridges are falling down, falling down, falling down. We ain't got no money to build them up, build them up, you know. By virtue of that, the views of Trump have become relevant and appealing to a large segment of our population who have had enough of business as usual. There is little transparency despite the fact that in 2008 we were promised just that. Now they're blaming Obama. They, they blame Obama them. promised transparency. They would blame it's not Obama's fault. They would blame the the black plague, the bubonic plague on uh, on Obama. A vote for the status quo is a vote against a functional government closely held by special interests. With Trump, we can be sure that will not be the case. Clearly that is too daunting for many in our midst. Perhaps then it is time to brush up on our daunting skills. We can ill afford another four or eight years of bickering, name-calling, and chaos at the expense of our economic and internal security. Well, incidentally, businesses, companies in Scandinavian countries are doing quite well from what I understand, despite the, the, 
the fact that they are uh, democratic socialist countries uh, or socialist. They're doing fine. The minimum wage is up high. I mean, where it should be in the twenties. You know, but you know, Republicans. Uh, uh, well, that 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 jerk um, on Fox, um, Bill O'Reilly, hey. just says, uh, "Why why would the U.S. want to be like uh, Scandinavia, the Scandinavian countries? Why, why?" <laughs> There's a, and then there was a whole list I I read online of all the 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 at, the good points, the good positive points, points yeah. of living there. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but why would Americans, you know, uh, want to help the 80 percent, huh? Why? They're doing so well, the 20 percent. Yeah, well, why do we got to help the 80? Well, O'Reilly represents the people who have that That's don't correct. care about the have-nots. That's correct. That's correct. After reading why people support a certain incompetent unqualified candidate and putting my dropped jaw back in place the rationale described in that letter shows an incorrect level of thought about the political atmosphere in the United States the answer to channeling the misguided anger that the writer describes uh, much of which is fomented by a certain news outlet and based on GOP obsession with opposing anything the current president supports is not to elect a boorish fraudulent individual putting someone in charge of the economy who has gone bankrupt several times who would be shunned or hated by most world leaders and proposes absurd solutions to multilateral problems despite the garb of the supporter pictured. Instead, I am a proponent of the outcumbent movement designed to vote out and remove nearly all of the entrenched politicals that have fostered the current gridlock and problems. See? You okay. gotta clean house first. You gotta clean out the barn like H. Ross Perot used to say. You gotta clean out the barn. <laughs> you know what I mean? Boy, that woman. That woman is yapping. She's getting louder and louder out there. Oh, anyway. How much time we have before lunch? Plenty of time. Lunch and, uh, oh yes we do have plenty of time. <laughs> Goldman Sachs agrees to pay five billion dollar fine for their significant role in the subprime mortgage meltdown that nearly brought down the entire United States economy. Something buzzed in my ear. Maybe it's stink bug. Maybe it's a hornet. Stink bug might take up take up uh, housing in your ear. The stink bug? Well, that's an earwig, right? Yeah. Earwig, ear. No, I mean, uh, what do these people get? They either coming closer to us, or they're getting louder. Yak yak yak, and then the machines. What the fuck is with the people in this area? They're building. But does she have to yap so loud? Blah, 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 blah. All right, go ahead. Of course, that's just a proverbial drop in the bucket to a powerful and prestigious firm like Goldman Sachs. And not one person will be held criminally negligent for all their reckless avarice. 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 Large American corporations routinely set up their headquarters overseas with little more than a small office and a few employees in order to avoid paying United States taxes. 
Other extremely large and highly profitable corporations receive tax subsidies from the government that they clearly don't need. Corporations and the extremely wealthy hide their assets in foreign countries with highly secretive banking laws to avoid United States taxes. Oh boy. Our government can fight unnecessary wars costing trillions of dollars that accomplish nothing more than destabilizing an entire region while creating the most heinous bloodthirsty terrorist organizations in the history of humanity. We can spend hundreds of billions per year to maintain a military that is responsible for the security of allies around the world who spend significantly less on their very own security and defense needs. All of this is apparently okay. Business as usual. But when it comes to helping the people of Puerto Rico in the midst of a financial and even humanitarian crisis, many conservatives immediately think, why should we have to lift a finger to help fellow Americans? They ask, why should we raise the minimum wage? Why should we care that people work hard but can't pay their rent and still buy enough food? Someone has to explain to me why all this is logical. Because the obvious hypocrisy boggles my mind. Got some good readings this week. Ah, silence is golden, finally. Silence is golden. It's golden. Remember that song? But my eyes can see. <laughs> oh, peace. Peace at last. Uh, and for peace, we're going to uh, change the pace a little bit. Tomato paste. And we'll have something a little Silence less. A little less. <laughs> I don't know even a word for it. In other words, something that'll calm my blood pressure down. Uh, well, soothing. Hopefully, something. Hopefully, a soothing hopefully. subject. Yeah, hopefully. A soothing subject, unless it's uh, about uh, sex, you know, then uh, it won't be so soothing, but uh, it'll be, um, it'll, go ahead. I am a junior in high school. Last year, a guy I have known for two years began showing a sexual interest in me. Yeah, well, his raging hormones are flying around. I rejected his advances. Last week, he began expressing his interest again, letting me know he wanted to have sex. Ooh. He, I remember those uh, days. Uh, why was it wine and roses? No, I remember those days of uh, walking around with an erection and 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 the least little breeze that that went by. You know, I was. It was like boing. Boing. He invited me to study. Only study. But he said we might make out. Oh, wow. Nito, Peachy King, they're going to make out. I was a virgin and had never even kissed anyone before. Her lips were, were virgin. Everything was virgin on this girl. I had just gotten out of a relationship that didn't end very well. I guess she didn't kiss there either. A relationship at that young age? That's like uh, junior in high school is like uh, 14, 15, I think. Something like that. So I liked the attention. I decided I was fine with just kissing. Well, not the guy. Not, not if he's like, uh, depends on how hot the girl looks. But as soon as I got in his truck. Manja, manja. 
he started to feel me up. Hey, hey, honey, hey, honey, you like my truck? Hey, you like you like my my stick shift? Well, I got a stick shift for you. He took me to a <laughs> semi-isolated area. Semi-isolated. And we ended up having sex. Mm -hmm. So he busted her cherry. It wasn't fun or pleasurable. Yeah, why do girls, uh, when they're young, always say that? Because you're breaking their hymen for crying out loud. The hell do you expect? Jaime? Jaime the robot on, on, on uh, Get Smart? Jaime from Jaime Town. Well, you know, uh, Jesse, Remember Jesse Jackson, Jesse Jackson, Jackson got in trouble for that, didn't Jesse he? Jesse Jackson was 100% right, and he got in trouble. Like what Jimmy the Greek Snyder said, he got fired. He was right, too. I told him he was hurting me. Uh, oh, 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 he was like a bull in a china cabinet. And she had the, the hymen was, oh, the, the wonder she felt pain. But he didn't stop. The poor thing. Seven bells for the virgin. He didn't stop until the third time I said it. He was very upset with me. Because he was, he was, he was... He must. He must have had. He must have been like a lead pipe. He may. He, he wanted. You know. I mean. His he only cared about me, pleasuring him. Well, uh, uh, in a in a vehicle, it's not really the best place for a first time. It was a truck, well, which I assume is a pickup. So he might have had a bed cover in the back, and he could have used the truck. The but bacon. but you don't. You always have to look around to see. The point the is, the cop would come by, huh? The point is, it shouldn't have happened. She didn't want it to happen, yet she went along with these steps that finally led to you know what. So it was like you uh, didn't want it. You cut it off. It was a immediately. It was a mu it was not a mutual consenting event. Consenting, correct. Cunt senting. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. The levity bells. It wasn't a mutual consenting no. event. Oh, I gotta love those levity bells. I told two of my close friends about <laughs> what happened. One said he had essentially raped me. The other said it doesn't count as rape because even though I said it hurt, I didn't say it forcefully enough. Oh, that's hogwash. She said stop. It hurts me. What, 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 what does she have to do? Uh, scream like a banshee? This is Dear Abby's. I think Dear Abby's going to side with her. I, yeah. I, I do. It appears you and that boy had a severe breakdown in communication. He had made no secret that he wanted sex with you. Well, that's what I see. He's a bull in a china cabinet. He, his testosterone was high. And he may have interpreted your willingness to kiss him after he took you somewhere other than what was agreed upon as a signal that you were willing, even though you didn't say so. Listen, if there's physical chemistry between a couple, the kissing alone will be a very arousing. Date rape happens when a fellow ends up coercing or forcing a girl to have sex without her consent. Well, that, that, isn't that what rape in general, well, no, actually, date rape. Uh, the, the 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 male usually um, uh, slips the the woman, the girl, a Mickey, and sedates her to the point where she cannot, you know, uh, 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 she cannot. Um, you mean like Bill Cosby? Fight his advances. She cannot like, push away like his. Bill Cosby. 
like Bill Cosby. He's got that necrophilia. Thank uh, you. Um, a fetish. Unless a girl explicitly expresses her willingness to proceed, it is n it is the responsibility of the boy not to proceed. Well, no means no, you know. Uh, uh, stop means stop. To me, what happened illustrates how important it is for parents to talk to their sons and daughters about responsible behavior. Because failure to do that can have lifelong consequences for oh, both. Oh yeah, and if, if a young girl gets knocked up, her, her childhood, her teenage childhood years are gone because once you have a kid, it's, uh, the kid is very selfish. It's all about the kid, the, the baby, wah, 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 mommy, 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 daddy, daddy, daddy. You know, no more, no more fun and games. If you haven't already done so, you should tell your parents what happened. You know, you can't go out when you want, go on vacation when you want. However, if you don't feel safe doing that, tell a counselor at school. Yeah, you know what? That's a good idea. They have counselors at school. Uh, I would say this is a important issue to talk to. Uh, well, parents would automatically get angry and, bl and blame the other person because their child can do no wrong. You know how it is. You know, they, they never look at the, analyze the whole picture. Uh-huh. Right. Okay, we're going to break for lunch, and uh, you will hear William Hamilton Morrill III was uh, doing promo in his words of wisdom. And we'll be back for the balance of the show. This is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye bye. Okay, we're back. Thank you very much, William Hamilton. Moral. Uh, oh, yeah, you yeah. know why I always forget? Because they're over here. Mm -hmm. Thank you, William Hamilton Morrow the Toyd, <laughs> for doing promo. Now, I want to introduce. I don't know if you can see it. I really don't know. The Bernie Bird is back. The Blue Bernie Bird. Hello, Bernie Bird. Ber the Bernie Bird is the word. He's right here. 
Maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. Uh. <coughs> oh. Mm -hmm. A moment of silence for uh, wrestling legend uh, Blackjack Mulligan passed away. We send our condolences to his family. Um, is he is the father of Barry Windham, Kendall Windham. I believe his last real last name is Windham. Moment of silence. Okay. I want to say hi to uh, Mr. Pete Clawson, the president and founder of BugsInCyberspace.com. Check it out. Call the men in black. What? Call the men in black. About what? Take care of the bugs in cyberspace. Didn't you see the movie? No, the bugs in cyberspace are nice. They're cool. They're misunderstood. And mm -hmm. and Pete Clawson is on a mission. He's on a mission to undemonize insects. Whoa. To remove the stigma. Whoa. And in some cases, the stigma. The stigma. Ha ha! Surrounding a bug of booze. Stigmata? Stigmata. Stigmata. That's people who bleed from the hand, like, like Christ, right? Oh, God. The stigma. Excuse me while I eat my organic banana. I know I'm going to get teased for eating a banana, but I don't care. I do what I want, when I want it, how I want, where I want, any ways I want. I don't care what they do on the major networks. The one thing they do that we don't do is they read a script. Especially those uh, buxomy women on Fox News. The, you know the women, they all have big breasts and pouty lips. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they have a script in front of them. They have a teleprompter. A teleprompter. Yeah, which they, they bitched about that Mr. Obama uses. A teleprompter. It's okay for them to use a teleprompter, but not for El Presidente. Well, because, because he's the black man in the White House. He, he can do no right. They could do no wrong because they're fair and balanced. They got corporations behind them. They're part of the oligarchy. In response to Alfred Doblin's column in The Record on the Pope's words on marriage, I maintain that Doblin should review the teachings of the Church, not only of this Pope. I am in neither. I am neither a progressive. Excuse me. I am not in a progressive parish nor a conservative parish. I am in a parish that is under the guidance of the successor to Saint Peter. That is an inaccuracy because a St. Peter has nothing to do with the Roman Catholic Church, but Simon Magnus did. And he was called Peter and P Peter uh, the Padre. Peter. Okay, that's the Peter they're really talking about. But they think they're talking about the Peter of the Apostle frame. You see, I bet I'll, I bet most Catholics think that the Peter that's buried mm -hmm. in, a, in a tomb at the Vatican is the Apostle Peter, mm -hmm. the fisherman. Hooray. I bet they think that. Interesting. Who was entrusted with the Church of Jesus? The second person of the Trinity on earth. Once you accept that, it becomes very clear this is not a poll or an election. This 
is the Word of God. And we are free to accept it or reject it at our own peril. Man and woman have free will. That there are absolutes. There is right and wrong. Yes, everything is black and white. The Ten Commandments leave no room for relativism, which is rampant on the front pages of our media. The Fifth Commandment does not allow killing on certain days of the week. It says, Thou shalt not kill, period. When Jesus told Peter, Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. He did not say that, up, that that applies only until the day the Mets win the World Series. It is clear to right-minded people that Jesus gave Peter and his successors the responsibility to guide conservatives and liberals to heaven. <laughs> but then, just like a traffic sign, it is up to the conservative or the liberal to decide whether she or he wants to obey it. We have a responsibility to form a right conscience with the aid of the Pope and the Church. We are all responsible for our own salvation or not. Yeah, you hear that, uh, Jehovah Witnesses and Mormons and Evangelicals? Be responsible for your own salvation and stop trying to proselytize and, and bother other people. <laughs> you know, they feel, they say the Bible says they have to go out and witness. Yes, they have to evangelize. Okay? But it says do not go house to house. Okay. Plus, they believe. Um, well, Jehovah Witnesses believe that uh, that there is no. There, are, the God is not a dual entity with the Father and and the Word. No, yeah. there's only one. They yeah. actually believe that Jesus was created. Well, first of all, they got to get their Sabbaths right. Sorry, go ahead. They got to get their Sabbaths right. Not not Sunday, Saturday. Here's Donald Trump's latest organizing embarrassment. Two of his adult children did not know they had to register as Republican. <laughs> then six months ago to vote in New York's Republican primary. So Donald Trump was upset, huh? Yes, Ivanka and Eric did not register. What the hell's the matter with you people, you two? Uh. They did not register in time, so they feel very, very guilty. His oh, daughter man. Ivanka, 34. That he wants to bang, right? And son Eric, 32 who are not affiliated with a political party did not register as Republicans in time to participate in the April 19th primary. Isn't that something? His own flesh and blood can't vote for him in the primaries. But it's fine. I mean, I understand that. I think they have to register a year in advance, and they did not. So Eric and Ivanka, I guess, won't be voting. Actually, they had to register by October the 9th. This is, um, well, they're, still, they're wrapped up in their own selfish, personal lives. Two rich kids, you know, they they had no idea you had to register. Okay, they had to register by October the 9th in New York which has some of the most restrictive voting laws in the nation. Trump's eldest son, Donald Trump Jr., 
and youngest daughter Tiffany I never seen are registered Republicans. He 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 tends to stay out of the spotlight, right? Donald I had never I seen him. I didn't think I'd seen Donald Trump. Donald either. Trump Junior. Yeah, he he, I, he never I never see him on uh, on the internet or being interviewed. Well, what's the name of the young one? The, what he's ten years old or something? That's not Donald Trump Jr. Is that is that with Marla Maples? The new one, Mel Melanie. Oh, Melani. you mean? Oh, she's. Oh, this is the child of his present yeah. wife. Yeah. He's ten years old. I don't know what his name is. <clears throat> His youngest son, oh, here he is, Baron. <laughs> Baron. Recently turned 10. Okay. With all of Trump's children have appeared by his side, while all of his children have appeared by his side on the campaign trail, Ivanka, in particular, has played a prominent role, introducing her father at rallies and serving as a key advisor. Advisor? Advisor, a thirty-year-old kid, 34, 30. a thirty-four-year-old uh, 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 female advising Donald Trump. That's great. She also recorded a series of videos urging her father's supporters to vote, including one that explained to Iowa voters how to find their caucus sites and how the process worked. Several recent polls have shown Trump far ahead of his rivals in New York. Well, that's his backyard. Mm -hmm. He is a native New Yorker, not Hillary. Bernie and Donald Trump. To astronomers' relief, Bernie Sanders. Yeah. NASA's planet-hunting Kepler spacecraft has won a reprieve. The spacecraft, responsible for detecting thousands of planets, wow, beyond our solar system, slipped into emergency mode last week nearly 75 million miles from Earth. Ground controllers managed to stabilize the probe on Sunday and NASA announced the news on Monday. Engineers still don't know what went wrong and will study income, incoming data for clues. Absolutely amazing how they can retrieve signals uh -huh. of the images taken by the Kepler. Takes time, but it, it it's just astonishing how how they can get images that far away. Yep. Not that the, the Kepler is is that far from Earth, but getting receiving the images, uh, I would imagine, yeah, it, it, it would it would come in piece by piece by piece. You know, that's how data travels over the internet, in, in uh, bits, bits of information, ones and zeros. Recent news articles have highlighted the need for candidates to speak out on women's issues, which seems to be another way of saying abortion rights. I do not wish to be counted among those who want the right to kill their unborn children. They're not unborn children until they are unborn children. For Born all. children. Huh? Born children. Well, I mean children uh, that are not children would be the fertilized egg and the embryo. <laughs> the embryo. Not, 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 you know, a developed uh, baby. Mm -hmm, in the mm -hmm. womb, but um, they think, these morons think that the fertilized egg is, is a, a child, but once they're born, uh, the conservatives can care less about them. Uh -huh. So, 
or to counsel other women to make that choice. Yes, we can choose what to do with our own bodies, but not with the helpless, voiceless bodies of the innocent unborn. Here we go again. A fetus is a new person. It's not. Not an extension of the mother's body. We need greater recognition of the dignity and worth of each human being at all stages of life. And what about the poor child in poverty that, that's already... He's born. a moocher! He's a moocher! Go get a job! Get a there job! You're a freeloader! Go get a job! Yeah, Newt Gingrich wants you to be his, uh, a custodian. Yeah, you but, know, in a school. Yeah, but it's a newborn. It's a newborn baby. It just had him. No excuse. The Republican Party says he's a moocher. Get a job. Yeah. Well, once he's in, once he's in the womb, he. He's well, once like, he's in the womb, he's a parasite. He. He's a parasite. Well, yeah. He's living off the mother. Well, yeah, he's a moocher inside the inside the, yeah. the mother in the womb. <laughs> he's a he's a he's a womb moocher. There you go. Hey. You better put that up on Facebook so it's before you lose that patented too. Womb moocher. On patented, you know? Womb moocher. Ah. A um the unborn is a womb moocher. There you go. Right. But if you're born, if you're on the outside looking in. I'm on the outside looking you're, in. You're worse Little of a moocher. Little Anthony and the Imperial. You're worse of a moocher. Now, now, there's no scientific data, of course, that this person, when this person makes statements about the fetus being a brand new child. He's making a statement, that's all. Anybody can make a yeah. statement. Women and men have a choice as to whether to engage in sexual activity and with whom and whether to use contraceptive methods. Or go bareback. More than 50 million innocent babies have been aborted in the United States since the 1973 Roe Ro versus Wade decision. You notice they use the word babies? By the U.S. Supreme? Yes, because this is what you call inflammatory language. It is trying to get you riled up. They just don't want to fund Planned Parenthood, period. They want to eliminate them, close them down. Because they want to control women's bodies. Babies, the baby. That's the only regulation that they like. Babies. To control women's bodies. It's like when uh, them calling a corporation a person. There you go. Same thing. You know. Bringing shame and regret to many women, fathers, and even grandparents of the unborn. Oh God, the unborn! I used to notice. Sounds like a. You know what it sounds like? It sounds like a, a, um, a um, sci-fi movie. The, the unborn. unborn. Well, I knew this guy. This old. When I used to work with seafood many moons ago, this this old geezer from Maine, the state of Maine, he used to call. He used to say people up there are maniacs. Ha ha. Yeah, and uh, he used to go r r r. The un he, was a, he was a right wing Catholic. Ah, the unborn. The un Every day I had to listen to this guy. Every time he came in for fish. Ah, the unborn. They're killing the unborn. The unborn. The unborn. I got tired of him. He really. He used to call me Jimmy Crack Corn. Because my name is James. So where does that account for the cracked corn? Unless he was insulting well, the he, cracked head. Well, he couldn't say corn. He actually said con. Hey, Jimmy, Jimmy Crack Con, Jimmy Crack Con. Then he started talking about the unborn, killing of the unborn, the unborn, the unborn. And, mm -hmm. Oh my God, the unborn. But don't ever be born. No, not well, certainly. Would not. No, don't be born without a silver spoon in your mouth. Oh no, born no. to be wild. Steppenwolf, right? Seven bells for Steppenwolf. I'm a European man 
living in Los Angeles. I use a dating app. App. And the following situation has happened many times to me. Yeah. As well as to other friends. <clears throat> we meet at a cool wine bar. Oh God. At 8 p.m. Expensive. Kiss on the cheek. Casual conversation. We order glasses of wine. She orders the most expensive, a $23 glass. Give this, before I leave, could I have this? I, oh, my, 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 my male rights activist friend is gonna love this article. Okay, then she says, do you mind if we order an appetizer? Oh, uh, here we go. I'm could starving. Kaching, kaching. Oh, they 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 never bother to to eat dinner before the date. Is this the first meeting? No, no, they're starving. There, so they 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 don't have they they don't eat dinner. This is all we call them in in my area. We call them um, uh, dinner whores. <gasps> dinner and drink whores. She orders lobster bisque oh my god the most expensive appetizer on the menu hey they're supposed to be all feminists now they want equality come when it comes to making money yeah she says my family comes from money i work with them in a non-profit oh really then she says i'm meeting some girlfriends for karaoke after but I'm still hungry so do you mind if we order another appetizer wait a minute she she's telling him that that she is she's not inviting him to go with her to the karaoke she's telling him that she's busy tonight but she is ringing up a tab on this poor sucker sap Got, sap gotcha it's sap sap then she says, I need to use the restroom. Let's leave after that. He should have left while she was in the restroom. Can you get the bill in the meantime? Oh, and she, oh, and she said for him to get the bill? The woman from Money told him to get the bill. You know what I would have said? As she uh, uh, enters the ladies' room, I would have said to the waiter, I have an emergency. I have to leave. She's get. She's picking up the tab and then, <laughs> and then split. So, Amy, am I a gentleman or a sucker? Amy better do the right thing. <laughs> Amy Dickinson better say the right thing here. You arrived in L.A. a gentleman, and you've transitioned to a character in a noir movie. I understand that there is still some cultural pressure for a man to pick up the check on the first date. Yeah, but it was the first meeting. The most gracious way for women to handle this awkwardness is to, of course, offer to at least split the check. Gracious, yes. And any gentleman will respond to this offer by turning it down. Uh, this is not equality, people which allows the man to feel both generous and appreciated. And a sap. Part of the problem might be that you are supplying a dating experience to someone you are meeting for the first time. Always, always keep it very casual if you're just meeting someone for the first time. Coffee, cappuccino the most. The app supplies the introduction. Oy. Perhaps you should see your first meeting as a meeting, not a date. Of course it's not a day. You're meeting her for the first time. You should shake this up by skipping the wine bars and suggesting instead a hike in the hills or a stroll through a farmer's market or a visit to one of LA's famous food trucks. A hike in the hills with a total strange man? I don't think the woman's gonna go for that. 
What's she talking about? Hiking the hills. You know, you know, uh, when I watch Crime Watch Daily, a lot of uh, uh, female victims of serial killers, many of them met the, the, the men online, on, on, through online dating. So a hike in the hills is not going to fly nowadays, Amy Dickinson. <laughs> Walking alongside someone and seeing how this person interacts in the real world is revealing and more fun. If the stroll goes well, you can always progress to drinks and dinner later. If you invite her out, you should pick up the check. Well, they, the uh, women that, women that defend the, uh, the man who ends up being a sucker and a sap usually says that it's customary that the person who does the inviting picks up the tab, which is only fair. I mean, you know, you, of course the women will never make the first move, you know, very rare do they do the inviting. I thought they did nowadays. They do, they uh, they do, uh, uh, I, I got screwed over one time by a, a girl from um, a family, with, a family with, a, no not Eponema, the girl uh, um, was from a family with money, they Ooh. lived in a, in a ritzy area, Ooh. she invited me and she tried to stick me with the tab, she tried to go in the ladies room when the, when the tab was, when the bill was uh, placed on the table. Uh -huh. I says, you know, hey, you invited me, you know. They're, oh, all my male friends pay. I says, yeah, but what do they get? What's the return on their investment? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, big deal. Ooh. It's not not right. But um, my strategy to single people out there in modern day America, America, mm -hmm. is to uh, after you meet someone. Uh, after you uh, see a profile that you like and you feel you have um, some things in common and you're attracted to their photo you go from there you get to know them you get to know their mind and what makes them tick on the telephone first and better yet Skype when you Skype when you do a video call you're speaking to them, you're getting to know them from a distance. You're seeing what they look like, so they've, they're, they, they're verifying themselves that their photos are recent, clear photos, that they're not misrepresenting themselves mm. through the wrong photos. And you get to see them talk, their mannerisms, the whole bit. And mm -hmm. you communicate that way. For, for a little while. You get to know them first, then you meet them in person. You know? Mm -hmm. I mean, then it becomes, it, it, you, it takes all of the anxiety, anxiety out of first meetings. There's never a blind date. It, it, it really makes it very comfortable when you finally get together because you've already seen them for what they really are, mm -hmm. you get to know them. You told me that a long time ago. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta see if your minds yeah. click, but yeah. if, before you actually mind go, intercourse, before you go out. Yes. I mean, I mean, wonderful. All right, you like their photos. Well, you gotta find out it's really them. Okay, after you find out it's really them, then. You, you already decided that there's physical physical chemistry okay you have a, um, the first video chat okay they verify themselves they you know it's really them they're not faking then you have to see if you're compatible mm. and that is the mind click the mind intercourse like uh, dr. Bill says you know, and, and that's the whole thing in a nutshell. But this this business about you know um, not going Dutch and uh, and you know and uh, going to a place where there's liquor and food and the woman conveniently skips dinner that day and uh, you know unless you're a couple, it orders all the expensive shit. 
Yeah, well, <laughs> hey, uh, 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 many years ago, my friend Andrew Anderson, a professional wrestler extraordinaire, he was dating. He was dating this other woman at the time, and she could, she just picked the most expensive thing in the seafood restaurant uh -huh. on the menu. She uh, uh, she wanted the rock lobster tail with filet mignon, and and of course they surf and turf. They, they like to pick the expensive drinks like the apple martini, Ooh. but it's on your dime. It's on it's on you're paying for it, so they go for the most expensive items when they're with their girlfriends. I'm sure they don't ring up a big Kool tab. Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid. <laughs> Kool and vodka? No. Ah. No, it's, they probably order like something like a screwdriver or a glass of wine or something reasonable, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but not not martinis, which in, in um, certain parts of the country can be as high as uh, $20. Ah. Or, yeah, yeah, tell me about it, you know. I have a huge dilemma. Anima or a dilemma? Jane and I have been good friends since middle school. I love her like a sister. Recently, Jane accepted a job at a church as the youth director in town where we attended college. She is good with youth and is very outgoing. However, Jane was not fully truthful when applying for this job. The church asked all applicants to affirm its faith statement and a code of behavior that prohibits premarital sex. Jane signed the code of behavior indicating that she would not have premarital sex. What a bunch of nuts. To further confuse the issue, she told them that she did not have a boyfriend. In truth, Jane does have sex. However, she is a quiet lesbian. You mean like a closet lesbian? You mean she, she's bisexual, right? In a technical sense, she says, that she did not lie because she does not have intercourse. Oh. Oh, I see. Now she's a carpet muncher. Since the church did not ask her if she was gay, ah. she said that she did not deceive them. Ah, the technicality, like Bill Clinton. I never had more sex than that woman. A uh, uh, blowjob is not sexual intercourse. Not a relationship. Yeah, I did not have sex with that woman because a blowjob is not just, intercourse. Just because I stuck a cigar up there don't mean nothing. Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about... Remember that? Salt and Pepper sang that. Let's talk about all the things... I feel like this is a problem and that a church employee who is touching, excuse me, teaching. <laughs> touching. That teaching happens a lot too. <laughs> the youth ought to be good Christians should be fully honest. There's a lot, and, and you know what? It's, it's, not, oh, it's not just men fooling around with the young female students. It's the, it, it's the other way around. It happens quite often. Even if it means that she would not get the job. Does the church have a right to know the truth? Do I have an obligation to say something? Does it even matter if it does not affect how she does her job? Let's talk about sex, baby. Since Jane won't listen to me regarding this, I thought about sending the pastor an anonymous letter. What do you think? <laughs> I think she needs a shillelagh. 
Jane seems to have shared details with you concerning how she filled out her job application. If you disagree with her choice, you are obligated to try to persuade her to make a different choice. You are not ethically or morally compelled to do anything else. Keep your Pinocchio nose out of it. That sounds like Ted Cruz, right? Keep your Pinocchio nose out of it. Lion Ted. Like like this. Wait, wait. wait. He starts off like this. I will do the best for America. I care about you people. <laughs> you say that according to the application, Jane agreed not to have premarital sex. She doesn't seem to have been asked whether she has ever had premarital sex. She has agreed not to have premarital sex while she is employed by the church. So perhaps you should assume Jane will adhere to this chastity pledge. Oh gosh. Jane was also asked if she has a boyfriend. You got a boyfriend? And she has answered truthfully. Nothing you detail about Jane's behavior indicates that she is not a good Christian or a good youth leader. Never asked her if she has a girlfriend. She never asked me if I had a girlfriend. Not all Christian churches discriminate against homosexuals. That's true. This episode offers a golden opportunity for you to examine your own morals. Yeah. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Yeah. She... Based on technicality, she did not lie. No. But that's just one way of, you know... That's a human way of dealing with the truth. Technicality. Like Hillary Clinton debating, Exactly. Right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, ev evading the blame which is pointing right at you, evading it, evading, evasion. Yeah. yeah, like it doesn't exist. Like yeah. people, people can't uh, see for themselves what's going on. Right, well plus well, there's- they can, but they, 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 they throw her a bone. What? They throw her a bone. That's the problem. Plus many underhanded ty uh, 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 activities underhanded actions nowadays are trivialized through desensitization or desensitizing them or or uh, same old same old that's the way it is you know it's you accepted know. as the norm there you go which is which is one step down to the pits of hell. You you just one step down, closer and closer. Mm -hmm. If you start desensitizing and trivializing, accepting bad things as the norm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like greed. You know, you 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 give the rich a little tax break, and then next year a little. You know, they're gonna want a bigger one and a bigger one and a bigger one, and they get it. And then every be, time. Then and then. Before you know it, they're writing the laws for the country. Ah, that's what happened. You know, little little by little by little. That's what happened. You know, or uh, the story about the guy who gives a homeless man uh, a $5 bill in New York City, and the homeless man says, oh, you, uh, what's the matter, you can't give me a 20? <clears throat> you know, it's like oh people, when you do them a favor and you cut them a break, they always, you know, it's like an open wound. They, you know, they always want, they always try to see how far they can get with you. Like, like how, how, how much they can get away with. A child does it. A dog does it. If you have a puppy and you don't train it right, you know, they, the child, the pets, they, 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 they test you. They see how much they can get away with it. Hey, wives, girlfriends do it. 
Look at those shows. Uh, uh, Everybody Loves Raymond and The King of Queens. The, uh, the wives, the, both of them, are horrible. They, they don't let their husbands have uh, friends and hobbies and interests. They can't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. They're always uh, browbeating them and, and nagging them and criticizing them. And uh, it's like, um, you know when all that cr uh, crap changes in a relationship? When the first child is born. Once there's kids, I think what happens is the woman gets stuck at home with the kids. And if the husband wants to do something, maybe she feels that he's going out doing what he wants to do. And she's stuck at home with the kids. Maybe that's why they get nasty with him. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, you, you, you got to set the rules from day one. You got to nip the problems in the bud and you have to stand by the rules you know you can't be uh, cutting anybody any slack it's got to be even across the board with everybody that's all oh and the hornets back oh no I hear I heard the buzz it maybe went out so oh, uh, anyway yeah. that's it yeah cuz uh, the stuff I have on top here is a little long all right save it for next a little time. long in the tooth Welcome, everyone. Welcome. I mean, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for Progressive Discussions. Progressive Warriors Unite. <laughs> Feel the burn. The Bernie Bird is the word. And uh, this is our official in New York primary 2016 campaign show because the New York primary 2016 is this Tuesday so good luck Bernie Sanders we endorse Bernie Sanders and uh, and that's that I wonder when uh, New Jersey primary is coming up I think I think it's June 6 or something yeah because we were in New Jersey uh, but we're also near New York City. Um, I know California is the big kahuna. I believe that's the last one. California? Yeah, probably in July. So they're saving, they're saving the, the big, big mama jamma toward, for the end. Because the ones out west now are, are, are cheapos. You mean low, low delegate? Wyoming, Montana, all these. I don't even think they did Oregon. People. I don't even think they did Oregon. No, Oregon didn't do it. Where, where, where Pete Clawson is from, uh, uh, Bugs. No. Bugs in cyberspace. Bugs in cyberspace. Oregon. Bugs in cyberspace. Bugs in cyberspace. Whoop dot whoop. com. Dot com. All right. That's it. We'll see you. Have a good one. <clears throat> Get out and vote, New yeah. Yorkers. I hope you're registered. Get out and vote. Democrats. Well, um, hopefully, hopefully Hillary supporters will all have car trouble on Tuesday, uh. and everyone who is a uh, everyone who feels the burn will get out and vote, especially the young people, first-time voters for young people. Get out and vote. It's extremely. You know, one of the problems, though, in New York is, is is the fact that Bernie has attracted a lot of independents and uh, not Democrats per se, and only Democrats can vote in the, in primary. the New York primary. Yeah. So that might whittle down, you know, his uh, his count a little bit. Well, you know, that that was never really emphasized in uh, in the 2016 campaign because uh, you and I knew about the law but how, how many people you know considering how many knuckleheads are in the United States how many people knew about this law ah. that you have to be a uh, registered within the two-party system in order to vote in the primaries right. I was originally an independent. Mm -hmm. I had to re-register as a Democrat 
because I wanted to participate in the primaries. Mm -hmm. But how many people know about it? But this simple law should have been emphasized a long time ago, you know, just like a lot of other mysteries, like uh, how come Robert Kennedy Jr. and Elizabeth Warren didn't help Bernie Sanders out in Massachusetts, campaigning for him there. He should have won that state. Yes, he should have. Ara, ara, ara. You know, and, uh, and that's that. All right, we'll see you guys. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.